friends, thanks for stopping by today. We are doing another foundation review for dry, mature skin. If you're new to my channel, my skin is very, very dry. Uh, I do not have a lot of texture problem. I have minimal pore um, that are an issue for me. And I have Botox in my 11s and Botox on the side of my mouth. I have no fillers in my face and I have very, very strong marionette lines. I have sagging through here. I have deep wrinkles. I have very, very bad wrinkles around my mouth and my forehead has, uh, strong wrinkles here. And also I have very strong wrinkles here. And when I'm pointing out the wrinkles, those are the areas that present a problem for me with foundations. So uh, as usual, I'm going to apply the foundation and we will do some wearing of it during the day. I'll take some photos and it will all be here for you. All right, I am 59 years old. I will be 60 years old in November. So keep that in mind. However, if you are a young girl with very dry skin, but no wrinkles and outside of if I have a problem with a foundation in my wrinkled areas, they may work very well for you. So don't tune out granny, okay? Leave granny here and just listen to her and take out the wrinkles. All right, my friends? All right, so let's get started. Today's foundation review is going to be on the Bounce by Beauty Blender. And I ended up with 2.50 as my color. And we are going to get started in just a moment. But first, let's go and see what the website says about this foundation. This foundation is $40 for one ounce. That seems to be the standard size for, some, for most foundations. Every now and then you get one, they chintz on us a little bit and they gave us 0.75. But anyway... Uh, the bounce is one ounce. It's $40. It does come in 40 shades. I know there was some controversy about the, um, the release of their colors. They, right now they have 40 shades. It was developed with a high speed hyper whip process. It is a silky smooth formula. It is said to be light as air in texture for easy blendability. It is an antioxidant rich formula with birch extract. It is a matte look that looks like skin. Uh, the complexion is perfected and protected. It is never cakey or fake looking. It is vegan Cruelty-free, has no paraben, phthalates, oils, or sulfates. It is a woman-owned business, and it can you can build and layer this foundation. Now, I will say on the Sephora website, for my color match, it says 3.5W. Uh, in store, that was way too dark for me, so do not always follow what that Sephora color match says, all right? All right, so let's get started, and I do believe there are silicones in this but let me see all right let me look at the ingredient list and see yes there are silicones also in this formula okay all right so this has a fancy dancy little container little pump it is a glass bottle and the uh, one side of it is uh, made to be your foundation little palette but I'm still going to pump it out on my palette so you can see the formula but that's the concept of this. I find that that will get very dirty because the testers in Sephora were disgusting. It does come with a lock. You unlock it and you can lock it so the pump will not go down and then you can unlock it, which is kind of clever uh, because how many times have we had foundation pump out inside of our makeup bag? We do. Okay, uh, so, so the concept of this is that you are to just push it and your foundation comes out on the actual pad okay so that kind of would drive me nuts I can tell you that already so I'm going to go ahead I'm gonna wipe this off I'm gonna go ahead and squirt this on my pad because I want you to see the consistency of it and also I want you to see the color but you can see that it doesn't really run. I can hold it upside, it's not dripping. So that is the formula. So what I'm going to do, now this color actually, looking at it like this, looks okay for me. So of course I'm going to use it with the Beauty Blender sponge because that's how they would recommend it. And then perhaps on this side I will use a foundation brush. So let's get started. We're going to first, and my face is primed 
with the Dermalogica Hydra Blur Primer. This is the primer that I have been using for a while now, so I know the, how it works with most foundation, which I might add pretty darn good, all right? I forgot so to mention my eyes are already done because I turned these into tutorials. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and put a dab of it there, a dab of it there, a dab on my chin, and then of course I need to put a little bit more on my nose. And then I'm just gonna use that whole little pump that I used on there. So now this is a, this is an orange beauty blender. I think Derm Store might have sent this to me about a year or so ago. So I don't know if the orange one is available. But anyway, start pouncing this foundation all over and see if that's too much. Now that was quite a pump. So I don't think I'm going to need to be layering this. But remember, you can layer and build this up. I'm going to avoid my eyebrows because they're already done. Pull my hair back over here. I'm going to pull this up here so I can get it inside the creases because it just gives a nicer, smooth finish for me. And then we're just going to go ahead and tap up over our ears with this. And I'm just going to go along the jawline, over the tip of the nose. And now we're going to see how that looks. Uh, that so is uh, what the foundation looks like. So it gave pretty good coverage. The color seems just a tinge yellow when I'm looking at it. Um, from a distance in that mirror, the uh, finish looks pretty good. It really does. And um, I, I can't see, I forgot to mention, I do have a touch of rosacea that is here, but it's not a rosacea that causes me any problem. Okay, so it's very, very minor. And it only comes out really when, you know, I have a hot flash. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, from a distance, it looks beautiful, okay? So now let me bring this in. Okay, so it does have a really pretty finish. I'm gonna need a little bit more of it on the nose area because it didn't really cover here. So let me just take what's on the sponge and work it in. Now I do have a very, very small age spot right here that if you j climb up on top of my face, nobody is going to talk to you this close. And if they are, you need to say, dude, back up. Okay, give me some space. Because I mean, I'm looking at my face like this and really nitpicking with these foundations. But if someone is talking to you, they're probably going to be like this distance at the closest. Because if somebody got up in my face like this, I would have to, yo, back up, my friend, back up. So, so with that being said, that people aren't going to be standing on top of me, I do think this has a really pretty finish, and I don't think that I need another layer. Now, of course, if you have many imperfections or you are covering uh, serious age spots or um, discoloration, then you may need a little bit more, but this one layer is perfect for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another squirt of it. And I think I, it comes out in very small squirts. So I put three pumps on there and uh, I will see how much we use. I'm just gonna start putting the same amount on this side and this side, and then I'll just put a little bit on the Beauty Blender so I still have quite a bit on there that I can use, and I'm gonna wipe my finger off on here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pouncing. Oh, I was going to use a brush. Let's grab a brush, all right? Let's grab a brush, my friends, hang on. All right, so I grabbed the It brush, and we're gonna go ahead and start blending that down to see what kind of finish we get with a brush. And it doesn't have any smell to it as far as I can t pick up. And believe me, these, this nose is too sensitive. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead, go carefully around my brows, because I already did the brows. And I all right, gonna blend it down just slightly. I think I can make this color work for me. I don't like to go too dark because then I start to look muddy. Okay, and then, of course, my glasses here, where they sit on my nose, I'd like to go and see if they could put filler in there. Now, there I would have filler, but then it would just get smushed around when I wear my glasses, because I wear my glasses 
most of the time. Contacts I put in when I'm going out, fancy, uh, or if I'm on camera always, because I can't, I don't want my glasses. I have to take them off, then I can't see, and uh, you know. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Now remember, I have a lot of veining around my eyes here. Tons of blue veining, greenish yellow veining over here, and also on this side. So it's important for my foundation to cover that too. So let's bring in the mirror. Oh, the brush is beautiful. I actually, I actually think I like the brush side better than the beauty blender. And yeah, it's beautiful. It's a really, really pretty finish. Absolutely gorgeous. It did not cover this one very strong vein that I have running here. So I will work with concealer on that. But yeah, I'm going to pick up just a little bit more on that brush. And I'm going to do my nose because my nose needs a little more coverage. I skipped a few spots. Go right over my lips with it. I'm not going under my eyes because I'm going to use a concealer because it's not really covering the veins. Okay, so that is perfect. It's beautiful. All right, I want you to get a good look at how that looks. It is really a beautiful finish, my friends. Gorgeous. And I still do have some left on my little palette. Okay, okay. so it is 10 o'clock right now. We started this uh, foundation review at 10 a.m. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my makeup, and, and then we're going to do some check-ins, okay? L let me just talk about how it feels on the skin. It feels like absolutely nothing on the skin. I do not... I cannot tell I have foundation on my face. I really like that in a foundation. And I do think when I'm looking in the viewfinder, uh, I think it looks absolutely beautiful, especially. And then when I'm looking in the mirror that I have that sits probably two feet away from me, it really has a beautiful, beautiful finish. Now when I now zoom in and I look at myself, I do see that I have foundation on my face. And I do think it is going to accentuate. This is my age area right here. This is where I show all my age. I don't show my age in my upper half of my face. I have no wrinkles throughout here. But when you get to this area of my face, it really shows my age. So, now so uh, yeah, we're going to have to see how this wears throughout the day. But I'm having a sneaky suspicion that it just might accentuate a little bit. Right, okay, friends, so I am back with the finished look. It took me a little longer because I was working on a tutorial also. So it is 1049 now. And uh, I thought I would just give you a quick update how it feels. It still feels wonderful on the skin. It doesn't feel like I have anything on my face actually except for lip gloss. I can tell I have some lip gloss on. But um, it looks, it's still, from a distance in the viewfinder, it looks absolutely stunning to me. And when I look at myself in the mirror, it looks really good still. Now when I come up closer, it hasn't um, in the areas that I thought it would start to show my age quicker, it hasn't really budged so far. It still has a really pretty finish to it. It is a tad bit dry looking. I, I think that the powder look would actually go away if I were to use a setting mist. I had planned on using the cover of FX and I forgot to put it on and I have a silk blouse on so I don't want to go ahead and spray this now. I think if I spray it, it will help with the powdery look a little bit, but I still think there I'm going to have areas that are accentuated slightly by this foundation. But we'll do a check in a couple hours. I'm going to record another video and then uh, we'll go from there. So when I do my check in, uh, my hair may look different because I sometimes go and do another tutorial, but trust me, my friends, it is all done in the same day. All right, so I'll be back in a little while to uh, do a check-in, but for right now, I think it really has a beautiful, beautiful look to it, especially on camera. Um, and, and I do still have the lights turned down. I didn't, I have them turned down a lot and I adjusted my camera so that you really get a feel for my face and all its wrinkles, okay? All right, I'll be back. 
All right, my friends, I am back for my check-in. It will be my only check-in. It is seven o'clock at night now and uh, finished dinner. I feel like I could kill Dracula or a vampire or something with all the garlic I put in my salad dressing. I make my own salad dressings and I put so much garlic. Lou's like, Tammy, you're killing me with the garlic. I have to talk to people every day. You're killing me. But I say to him, it's so good for us. <laughs> anyway, all right, so uh, I am back to talk about this foundation. I haven't really looked at my face to see. I did take a picture with a flash and I took a picture in natural lighting outside. Um, well, in front of a window so that you get uh, what it looks like in natural lighting. Excuse me. So now let's see what it looks like. And all I did was refresh my lipstick. Nothing else has been touched all day. All right. And it is the same day. I'm just wearing my cooking clothes. Right, so I let's get to the foundation. Okay. First of all, when I look at it into the viewfinder, I think it looks fabulous. I think it absolutely looks stunning. It has a great look to it. When I look in the mirror, I think it looks fabulous. Now I did wear sunglasses most of the day because I was in and out. So I had my sunglasses on because I'm wearing contacts. So let's start with that. It does wear off where your glasses would lay. So if you're somebody who puts on reading glasses to look at your laptop or to read papers all day, and then you take them off, be prepared that it will wear off in those spots, but not, it's not totally worn off, but there that you can see that there are marks on both sides. Uh, my forehead in my 11s, uh, it looks really, really great. Now, when it gets to this part of my forehead, it is gathered only slightly in the forehead lines, not so much in these, just I can see a little bit of it collecting in that line. But when I'm looking at it, now remember, I have a five time magnifier. Nobody is going to walk up to you with a five time magnifier and say, let me check out your foundation. Yeah. And if they do, you don't want that person in your life. Okay. But I can tell you that it looks very, very dry on this, not dry, a little cakiness going on just a little bit. And remember, I did not double up on it. Okay. All right. So now the nose area, it wore really well on the nose, but when you get to the side of the nose, it is just all gathered and caked in this area here on both sides of my nose. Now, remember, I only lightly powdered the tip of the nose and the T-zone area here, and I powdered here. I did not powder around my nose. Therefore, it may need to be powdered to stay, but you can see there is I have a little bit of uh, veining around the nose area. You can see that is totally broken through and more so on this side than that side. And I'm not going to judge the wear and tear here because I'm constantly dabbing because I have a drippy nose. If you've been watching me for years, you know, I'm drippy nose, Sammy. But anyway, so I'm not going to judge the way it wears on my, uh, nose because that just wouldn't be fair. So now above my lips, this is where I have probably the most lines on my whole face. I mean, my lines for my lips start from here and they stop right here. So that is length from here to my lip, how deep my lines are. Now, of course the camera doesn't really show them except for when I'm moving my mouth. If you really pay attention, go ahead and examine me. If you do, you will see that my lines, those lines that you see when I'm speaking, that's where the foundation is really aging me. So it is, uh, there is foundation gathered in those lines. And I will say that with this foundation on those lines have been accentuated. So chin wear is pretty good. It's just worn off slightly here on my chin, not too much, but that could be from, you know, me talking on the phone or something. I did have to call a couple of places today. Now, when we get to the marionette lines, even though it is worn off here and it's a little bit cakey here, it has not gathered in my marionette lines. Now this side is not as deep as this one. So let's take a look at that one only slightly. It really, it's not an issue. It really isn't. Now in this area here, 
where I have a lot of, I have uh, sagging and I have deep wrinkles and then I have a bunch of fine lines that won't run in between the deep wrinkles. That has been accentuated. It looks a little bit dry, dehydrated, I should say, in that area. The cheek area looks absolutely beautiful. It wore fabulous. Same on this side, absolutely beautiful. Even where I didn't powder and where I did powder, there's not a whole lot of difference. It is worn slightly here. I was on the phone, so it is worn slightly here, but not so much everywhere else. And uh, this concealer, uh, obviously, no concealer works for any. You know, we just have to face it. When you have lines, it's, I, I liken it to this. When it's raining, every crack in the road, as the water flows, those cracks are going to get filled. It's the same on our face, ladies, okay? So we just have to find ways around it, okay? So that's why we're doing all these testings. Testing of powders, concealers, foundations, everything. All right, so I would say overall, from a distance, it's fabulous. It really is. And like I it said, really, it really, it's not bad for a long wear foundation. Now I will say that I did spray the Cover FX uh, setting spray that I showed you. I did spray that on. First of all, let me tell you, that's the first time I've used that product. I just, because that's a recent purchase also. Um, the sprayer on it is awful. It spits at you. So earlier today, right after I put it on, uh, I could see all these little spots where it had dried on my face and it, it did look terrible. So I think by adding the setting spray, it did uh, take away a little bit of that powdery look. So a setting spray is important. And if you're somebody who wears cream products, you won't have to powder where I did. And you know, this is the first time I've used the Huda eyeshadows. Um, I don't care for them. I don't care for the color. They almost, when I was putting them on, they looked much softer. It's almost like they oxidized on me. So I really had to, I had to blend them down a little bit because they were, they were really going crazy in color, but right now they seem to be okay. All right, my friends, so uh, I'm going to dim the light even more, and I'm going to come a little bit closer so that you can see um, my face close up, all right? So overall, this is not a horrible foundation for a dry, mature skin that has wrinkles and folds. But I do feel that it, when you start adding layers onto this, like another layer of foundation and then maybe a powder, then I think you might get that cakey, dehydrated look to this. And I think you will start accentuating your age. Let us know in the comments if you've been using the Bounce Beauty Blender foundation. What color did you end up getting? Did you have a hard time finding a color? And is it working for you or not? And if it's not working for you and is working for you, please state what type of skin you have and what type of look you prefer in your foundation. I prefer a more natural look, but I don't have a lot of things to have to cover up. If I had to cover up a lot of things, then I would definitely wear more. So let us know what type of skin you have. Is it working for you or is it not working for you? And what type of foundation do you prefer? What type of look do you prefer with your foundation? Do you like a heavier look? I like like a more natural look of foundation and I also like something that has a little more glow. Do you prefer the matte look? Do you prefer a matte satin or do you like a glow? Let us know in the comments. It may help someone else. And remember, what type of skin do you have? Do you have a lot of wrinkles and folds? That is important because if you are 21 and we welcome you all, but if you're 21 with very dry skin but you don't have a lot of sagging or wrinkles, it's going to wear differently on you. The dryness will be the same as me, but how it collects will be a little different. And you know, I, I'm telling you the truth. All right. All right, my friends, that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget, subscribe, hit that bell notification. So you are aware of all my videos and go out in the world and be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all my friends, lovable. I love you all. Bisous.
And if you